light boss, bitch. You know. For sure. You're not listening to the mind of an Terry Smooth. I'm the Archangel Uriel, and I'm here to carry out God duties and motherfucking responsibilities. And right now, we're going to break down numerology, composition, or synastry. Now, for the most part, composition is like when you combine two energies together and make it one. So, you know, you might be, as far as your life path number in numerology, you might be a life path number two, and another individual might be a life path number four. Now, when you bring these things together, that makes six. So that would be breaking it down as a composition. Now, once we start to talk about it as synastry, that's the relationship between the two, between two and four. And you could break it down into a multitude of things. So keep that in mind. Also, I want to show y'all something to uh, where we actually doing this at. You know what I'm saying? What was that? So, for the most part, let's break down energies um, itself, whether you're a male or female. Now, when it comes to numerology, as far as your life, life path number, you play out more masculine energy if you are the life path of one, four, and seven. And what does that actually mean? That means you like to externalize your ideas and your imagination of the frequency vibration that your spirit is traveling through at the moment based upon your life path number, aka when you was born. <clears throat> Going based upon their system and their magic square. So understanding their meaning, you'll understand how it'll relate, how it relate to you and what kind of desires that you may have got lost in to even pick that specific date to come into this world that's already ran by certain shadow governments and things of that nature, right? So like I said, masculine would be one, four, and seven. These people like to externalize the things that they, that's going on internal with them first. They like to externalize things that's going on internal with them as far as one, four, and seven. Now, when we start to talk about the when we start to talk about the feminine signs, I mean the feminine uh, life path numbers as far as the numerology, this will be the two, five, and the eight uh, life path numbers. So, with two, five, and eight, these individuals take from the external realm everything that's externalized and they internalize it. So, a lot of times, a two, five, and eight life path number person will be passive or more persuasive or more conservative and reserving and observing way faster than a one, four, and seven individual. Let me break this down so it can make sense. A person that's a life past one is more of an individual. So they may be unaware of other people's expressions. So they may express more of themselves without being fully aware of how it may be reacted and responded to as far as the environment and other people that involve themselves. Four, a person's thought. A person rather get across their thoughts other than being smothered and being in a situation that other people limit their thoughts. Seven, you feel like you have some type of higher thought or wisdom about whatever you're going through and other people are going through. So for the most part, you're, you, you are already in the energy space of externalizing certain things first than per se um, a two, five, and an eight individual. Where a two individual is more about duality and relating. So as far as expressing themselves first, they're going to consider if this might rub someone the wrong way first. You know what I'm saying? So a person understand relatability. Number two, five, this dealing with emotions. Person that want to emotionally connect. So they don't want to do too much something that may cause too much emotional arousement or cause things to be unfamiliar and unstable. And then eight, eight is a person that likes to put time into a lot of things, right? So they may not even have enough time to even consider trying to redirect your idea about something because they too busy putting time in their relationship or whatever that they got going on. So you see the balancing and there's not a gift, there's not a, um, a negative or a positive to each polar ship. I'm just helping you guys understand because once we start to talk about the life path numbers of three, six, and nine, uh, these are androgynous. So they could play out through masculine energies or feminine energies. Now for an example, one, four, and seven as far as masculine, it could play out feminine energies also. It's just on a percentage level scale, it's a lot smaller. Same goes for the feminine energies. Uh, motherfucking two, five, and eight. They can play out masculine energies also. It's just smaller on the percentage level. You know what I'm saying? Where a back have to be against the wall in a spiritual spiritual realm where you have to prove something. Or it just might be a situation where it's called for. But as far as the three, six, and the nine life path numbers as far as numerology, you guys can kind of move in and out, in and out, interchangeable without getting lost in one polar shift in some way, shape, or form. Now, here's the thing, right? Once we start to talk about inner relationships and the synergy, right? Um, and shout out, to, shout out to Sierra Waters. Now look, this is a, a, a feather wand. So wherever you point this at, it's supposed to make that 
circumstance much lighter. Say you in a heavy circumstance. I'm going to make a whole video on this. We're going to go live tonight also. Say you in a situation that's heavy for you, right? When you point your intentions at that circumstance, situation, thought, or idea, or shape and form, it makes it lighter so you don't have to feel like it's as a heavier as a responsibility on you in some way, shape, or form. And slowly but shortly, you will manifest characters, a.k.a. people in your life, that don't play out or portray as much as a responsibility, a.k.a. a burden on you mentally, emotionally, or physically. You see what I'm saying? As far as material-wise or whatever. All right, but look, check this out. And then once you start to talk about the synastry and composition when it comes to your life path numbers, all these have relationships. Some num some numerology does better. Some people life path number does better with others than it does with others. But you can equalize all these things, especially if you watch my channel. It's all about the spirit realm when you talk about this shit. So for the most part here, check this out. Let's talk about one. Now, let's say two individuals are the life path number of one, right? So when it comes to, to the two life path number of one, Composition, this makes you guys 11, right? Two things of one come together. And this makes you guys correlated with, and it make you guys correlated with the number two. You know what I'm saying? So for the most part, that make your relationship powerful. So you guys are like a, a powerhouse in some way, shape, or form. Because both of you guys' individual circumstances come together and make you guys a powerhouse. So you, both of you guys' relationships can help the masses and be the example on how other people need to handle their relationships, but in a powerhouse kind of way, AKA both of you guys are like powerful individuals in some way, shape or form. So that makes the number two, two ones coming together makes number two. And just far as a sign and a sigil, that makes 11. So for the most part, both of you guys coming together can play out as an example on how other people could be a power couple in some way, shape or form. So this could be positive or negative. Negative is you guys relationship is toxic. You lead other people to play out their relationships like you guys, because you guys relationship may be so toxic, but at the same time, you guys still find some way to make it work. So you inspire other toxic motherfuckers to make situations like that work. So keep that in mind also. Now getting into uh, one and two. So let's say you are a life path number one person and you are in a relationship with a life path number two person. So, but when you guys come together, you guys make three as far as the composition. So you guys are impactful as far as within your surroundings. On a positive end, you guys inspire you guys surroundings, whether you are around people that's in relationships or not. You might, you guys might have friends that's not in relationships, but as far as these individuals like to come around y'all because you just inspire them to do anything even if they're not trying to get in relationships. You you guys' relationship might inspire them to do their creative goals or some other kind of shit in some way, shape, or form. Because the, the life path number that's a one in a relationship, they're an individual. And a life path that's a number two, they know how to relate their partner to other people. They know how to introduce their partner to other people that could get whatever this individual, whoever the life path one is, they can get from point A to point B a lot better. So they learn how to deal with relationships and, and not how to be as selfish in their life when they meet this life path two person. So it helps the individual one better. And then for the most part, this life path two person, they learn how to be more of an individual through the reflection and the eyes of the person that they're in a relationship with. That's a life path one. And they also already a life path two. So they already have certain relationships and things of that nature that can lead their partner. That's a life path one person and introduce them and network them a lot better. So they helped each other and then y'all helped the surroundings. Both of y'all are like a esoteric activist in y'all surroundings where people look at y'all on how to correlate certain things. And y'all might come through certain arguments at certain times because you know, the sign and the sigil still make 12. So a lot of times y'all may experience the ended stages of relationships a lot faster than other people. But as long as one person not selfish and one person is not lost into, other people thoughts and feelings on how they look at y'all relationship as far as the life path two person then y'all will be fine like uh because you know like i said each sign some signs does better than others but you know you can still all make these things work let's say life path let, let me try, how much time we on the nine minutes damn this probably gonna be all the numbers um uh, so let me just at least run down one and then you know later on or tomorrow we'll run down two and this will be a beginning process so right now i got three four series um running right now that i'm about to start uh, but for the most part, let's say life path one and you would uh, and life path three. So this would be three and one. So that's this is like the same video for if you're life path number three, and, or if you're like life path number one, right? Now check this out, right? Life path number. Uh, now this makes four when you guys come together as a composition. So you guys are the thought, the image of something. 
So a lot of times when a life path number four come together with a, a, a life path, I mean a life path number three come together with a life path number uh, one, a lot of times this is like a, 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 it may not be toxic, but it might be like a fake relationship, AKA it's just a thought. What people see from you is not what's going on behind closed doors. Y'all may be smiling amongst others and y'all family members, but behind closed doors, y'all worst enemies. Or it could be vice versa. Y'all might be worst enemies and people think that y'all relationship ain't together because y'all always arguing or fighting amongst things. So people develop their own ideas when y'all around them and y'all be fighting. But behind closed doors, y'all really, really is the closest things together. And that's y'all really the closest thing since motherfucker peanut butter and jelly on, on, on a slice of bread. So for the most part, and that's what people don't see. So it's like a fake relationship where it might be very real to y'all, but to other people, it might be different in certain ways where people develop their own thoughts on what's going on with y'all. So that's like a lot of times because you got one person that's an individual and you got one person that like to communicate and like to imagine and like to have a lot of thoughts. You know what I'm saying? So that's four. And I mean, I mean, sorry about, sorry about that. That's when y'all come together. Y'all relationship is like the thought, the image of something. But one person is an individual. One person is about their surroundings. It's about what they're familiar with. This is the life path three person. I keep mixing up four and three when I add them together. But as far as the synastry, the life path number four person, they like they like to communicate and think and think a lot. So they may overthink about a whole bunch of shit in their life. The life, the life path one person don't do as much thinking. They're just more of an individual and then they, they even hate being around other people that think too much because they start to feel like they're being judged by being themselves a lot of times. So, you know, for the most part, this is, it could be a tough, but it could be good once y'all come together. Once y'all come together, it becomes a four where what the, the life path one person is an individual, the life path three person is about what's familiar and this can help, this can give other people the thought on how you supposed to balance when two different, totally different people come together. Remind you, one, four, and seven is masculine. So two of the same energies coming together creates harmo harmful energy instead of harmonious energy. But for the most part, you always could transfer energy, redirect energy, re-commerce it, whatever y'all words y'all be using. Life, now, okay, one and, one and four. Now with one and four, this is, when y'all come together, y'all make five. So this is an emotional re relationship. Y'all that came together based upon shared shared relations or shared connections, aka y'all y'all knew someone, and that's how y'all met each other through someone else, or y'all had familiar circumstances or situations, aka y'all backgrounds are similar, or if y'all backgrounds ain't similar, y'all y'all look at certain things the same kind of way in some way. So y'all got an emotional connection in some way, shape, or form. So that's the like that'll be would y'all come together. So this could be toxic. How other people look at y'all, like. Other people may look at y'all like y'all not logical. Y'all not logical in y'all way how y'all formulate what y'all got going on. Or if you're on the positive end, then for the most part, people will look at y'all as an inspiration on, okay, this is what a relationship really means. A relationship don't always mean just sharing bills or who the breadwinner. Sometimes it takes more discernment and a connection in some way, shape, or form. So this is one of those kind of relationships. Now, here's that. Now, that's when it comes together. Now, as far as the, the synastry, the, the life path number one person as far as numerology, okay, they're going to be more in their individual goals. The life path number five person, they're going to be more in their connection. So they're more in their individuality also, but they have to connect with something, a.k.a. Let's, let's use this for an example. Let's say if a life path number one and five, both is, both is in a classroom. The life path number one is in there because they really individually need want to learn whatever that they're learning. Otherwise, they're not going to care about it. The life path number five person, they can't learn something if they can't emotionally connect with who's ever teaching whatever that they're trying to learn. You know what I'm saying? So they're more concerned with the messenger other than the message. The person can be telling them something that actually makes sense. But if they're telling them something in a way that, in a, in a way, it ain't what you do, it's how you do it. If the way that the teacher is conveying it, is in a way that this the life path number five person can't connect with. Let's say if this teacher is an over aggressive or over or over logical, where anytime somebody needs extra discernment or care or in some way, shape, or form, the teacher look at them like they stupid. Like you need to leave that at the door before you come in my classroom. Then for the most part, the life path number five won't even be able to receive the full the full percentage of the message because they can't connect with the person that's giving the message. You see what I'm saying? So. For the most part, the, the life path number five person could teach the life path number one person 
on how to express yourself in a more relatable way and, and care more about other people's individuality. And the life path number one can teach the life path number five person that um, everything don't need to be emotionally connected. Sometimes you, you gotta throw away the messenger and look at the message. Sometimes you gotta throw away the emotion and see what's going on in actual circumstance and situation so you can have the full potential of your own personal point of view or something. You know what I'm saying? But that's the little clashes that y'all may go through. Now, let's say um, one, one, uh, one and six. So a life path number six and a life path number uh, one person. So here's the thing, when y'all come together, um, and then, did I do one and five? Yeah, I mean, I did one and four. That's uh, So when y'all come together, uh, I think I mixed the mingle of those up in some way, shape, or form. So when the one and four person come together, that's an emotional relationship. When the one and five person come together, okay, the composition, y'all make six. So I ain't break down the composition. Y'all make six. So this is a, an, a, 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 this is a relationship that's attention seeking on a negative end or on a positive end. Y'all receive a lot of attention, even unwarranted, even when y'all not trying. Y'all might get a lot of secret haters or a lot of secret admirers. You ever got into a relationship? A lot of people in the urban, even in the suburbs, know about this. You got into a relationship and people don't like that. Y'all might have psyched other people up, but once y'all got together, it's like, it's like a, it's, it's, it's like it get a lot of attention in some way, shape, or form. Like people hate the fact that y'all together, and so and, and, and y'all knew that when y'all got together, y'all knew y'all was gonna make a lot of people mad, based upon y'all own personal relationships that y'all have with these individuals before before y'all got together, before y'all two got together. It's like one of those kind of relationships, right? It was it's a lot of attention. Six means sex, the joining of two energies to create another one, beyond, beyond physical. That's mentally and emotionally, and as spirits, we create those sons of gods and daughters of men to do that. Those yins and yangs and Adams and Eves to do that. You know what I'm saying? So as a spirit, when two spaces come together, one created Adam and Eve and another one created Adam and Eve. And when they when those two things come together, y'all create a shape and form, aka a ship that both of y'all spirits could jump in to relate to each other in. And this could be a soul group or all kind of other extracurricular kind of shit. But this is the basic root of how you develop relationships. This is how y'all are when it's the one and the five. The the uh, as far as both of y'all being individuals, this one doing it on a, a masculine side and one is doing it on a feminine side as far as the light path number five person. Now getting into uh, one is one and one is six, right? This is gonna be the situation where um, one person is an attention seeking person or one person likes to give a lot of attention. And then the light path one person is a person who likes to receive it or a person who's blind to giving attention to anybody else in some way, shape or form, right? So this makes seven. This makes you guys, this is like a lot of friction. You guys gonna learn from each other real fast. You guys may destroy each other's uh, backgrounds in some way, shape or form. AKA when you guys get together, the things that you guys brought with each other fade away in some way, shape or form. AKA just for you guys to be in a relationship, family members might not like it. You know what I'm saying? Or other friends might not like it and try to get y'all away from each other. And just for y'all to be together is like a fight or a struggle in some way shape or form so you got to keep that in mind also when you're dealing with um one one individual that's one and the other individual that's the six y'all gonna be that's composition you're dealing but you guys gonna learn from each other because the person that gets a, that go out for a lot of attention as far as the life path six they experienced a lot experienced a whole bunch of ups and downs rejections and success moments the the, the life path one person may have sheltered themselves a lot of times based upon insecurity so they can learn how to open, express themselves a lot more so their individuality can get more attention and then and vice versa. The six person can learn from the one person that a lot of times your attention is not, your, your attention and your importance is not just based upon the energy you receive from others or just what works or just a rejection and a success moment. Sometimes you have to just notice within yourself whether you see the results or not. So keep that in mind also. So even getting into, uh, so that's when it comes into the composition and that's also when it breaks that down into the synastry. Now, break it down, let's say one person is number eight and then the other person is number one. So for the most part, the life path eight person, this is gonna be the person that put a lot of time into things. You see what I'm saying? So, this is also kind of friction a little bit here because for you guys to even have found each other, you guys must have been doing the same thing or in, or involved into the same things. AKA the life path number one person probably was in a situation where 
they they cared about what they was into. So that was their individual goal or talent or school or teaching or doctrine that they went towards. The life path number eight person, this is what they choose to put a, life, a lot of time in. Whether they was in a situation that it was something that they, it, they didn't like personally, but they felt like it was the right thing to do based upon their upbringing or their geographical location or how they was raised, AKA they get ready to take their family business over or, or they just think it's the right thing to do to go to school. So you go to school, get these grades and doctrines, you don't like that class, but you know that you can get a job and solidify your life with security in some way, shape, or form. So, you know, this this would be the life path number eight person's goals into going into that, getting that uh, class at college. Where the life path number one, they'd be in that class at college based upon, because they was really individually invested into that. You see what I'm saying? Where the life path number eight, they just realized this class probably makes the most sense to, to get into right now and evolve myself into based upon my location and how I'm raised and the jobs that's in my area at the moment. So, but you guys will learn from each other also because you guys will learn how to put time more into a relationship other than you guys' sales. So you guys will learn that from each other. Um, and when you guys come together, you make number nine. This is, a, this is a wise relationship. A lot of wisdom and knowledge is being participated here because you guys are learning from each other's individuality on the highest level. So you learn how to filter through your own selfishness through your partner's selfishness. So this, you guys are, can play out as an example to other people who are in relationships on how to not get on the bad end, AKA let the little stuff bother y'all when the relationship was good at the beginning end, but then y'all start noticing each other habits and then that's when things start to get bad. You guys, as far as the number one and the number eight person, you guys, if you stay together long enough and if you marry, you could be the example to show other people that um, that those those events is going to come, but don't let those things matter to y'all. Those things is inevitable, and other other numerology and other signs, and uh, may come together with that not being in mind. And then once that come to the fork in the road of the relationship, then that's why a lot of times we experience so many divorces and uh, divorce court shows and shit like that. Shout out to uh, Judge Lynn Toler and this motherfucker, and, and and all this other motherfucking shit. And relationships becoming toxic. Because people not understanding that circumstance that people have habits that you don't know about yet. And when it comes to the life path number one and eight person, they bring these things to the table ahead of time. That's why I said sometimes it'd be a frustration or it'd be, it's kind of weird that these two individuals we even meet each other if they're not into the same type of things. And then since they meet each other because they got the same kind of job or whatever like that, now they got to learn how to balance each other's space because they have went so much in their own life, in their own space. They have to learn how to share space with each other. But once they learn how to do that, they can be the example with others that, look, y'all gonna be coming to frustrations that y'all don't like about each other that y'all don't know about yet. As a one and eight person, they already dealt with that. You see what I'm saying? Early. And, number, and last but not least, a one and nine person. Now, you guys make um, 10, one, zero, um, and then for the most part, when you bring these things together, 19 as far as similar, uh, Sinistry. Now, coming together, you guys make completion, one and nine. So you guys can complete each other. You have one individual and you have one person that's wise. The, the number nine person can show the, the, the number one person um, life path that you're being too selfish and your selfishness can be used for a greater good. And another life path number one person can show the life path number nine person that you can experience in this realm of reality. You can experience your own individuality with, without having to consider all, all other things at the moment even though it's smart to consider all other things but you could be too smart for your own good aka pass up on an experience where it can be an experience for you but since you think you're too smart you think you know the outcome you end up not going through that experience and none of us know the full potential of outcomes so for the most part you end up limiting yourself being a number nine at some time in that in that time in that kind of fashion so that's where a number nine person can learn from a life path number one person but then when you guys come together, it makes zero again. So you guys add more awareness, more space. And it's just one. It's one, two. So you guys make one entity. You know what I'm saying? So for the most part, you guys evolve selfish natures that you guys both have and risen and wise natures that you guys both have. And you guys could be like one thing itself. You guys are like the composition itself. When people look at y'all, they, they can't separate y'all. So even when both of y'all are separated one person might be over a family member house one person might be over a friend house people still see the other person on you almost to the point that 
a person in their own mind and heart a develop ideas and feelings like, oh, I better not say nothing negative about their partner when I'm around them. Where other numerology signs coming together, composition and synastry wise, may leave circumstances like that open. Like, a certain, especially like number four, uh, life path number four. They can't wait to get around their family and then their family can't wait to talk up and down about their uh, partner when they partnering around. But at the same time, it don't be at a state as a super negative. It's like all light and games and stuff like that. But it's not even like that when a one and nine person come together. It's on a level where it's like that's against the law type shit, whether you're talking positively or negatively. You, If you're around this person that's in a relationship with a person and they're in a one and nine, life path number relationship, you will, you will start to feel and develop ideas in your mind like, yeah, let me not even speak about their relationship at all. Uh, that's just them. If you catch one of them by themselves. And flight boss, but you know, for sure. And we're going to get into the two. You know what I'm saying? And, love y'all.